So we Good have Re Renee Berthelet and uh, Claire Townsend who are part of a painting duo. Hi everybody, you're joining us from New York. So you guys do these really interesting abstract paintings that are based on environmental goals, basically. Definitely, yeah. I mean, right down to the materials. Um, you know, we, we started this collaboration and we were gonna do a traditional gallery opening, but um, <clears throat> due to COVID, we switched plans and, and did this live performance. Yeah, so we did this live performance where we ended up uh, painting each other's costumes. And uh, so here you can see sort of the before and after uh, you know, the rehearsal image and after the performance and uh, uh, Yeah, we had um, denim jumpsuits that we we painted each other's scarves that we were wearing um, Which you can see a couple of here. We use them around our heads and also as like painting um, Mops to mop up like the just the spill from the paint and so they're really like this nice like long silk scarves that we ended up um, being able actually to cut up and kind of composition into paintings. Um, Renee has like some silk painting experience. And so she actually made some frames that we were able to stretch the silk onto um, to be able to paint on them. So they weren't touching the underneath or taking any of the ink up from anything under below them. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a, a, a little screen share of, of the silk being stretched. Um, oh, sure, yeah, let's see on. So the silk has to be stretched because of the nature of the material. Yeah, basically the, the water ends up sort of pooling on the surface and creates these like little patches that are, you know, it's not what you intended. Whereas the denim could, could be mounted and then painted, the silk really needs to be stretched first and secured with all these pins to the, um, you know, to the twine that's around the frame and it needs to be stretched tight. And then we would, we would mount them to the little mini canvases. Some of them are like four by six, five by seven. Um, but all in all, we ended up with 21 little paintings, each inspired by an individual coral. Um, mm -hmm. That one that you saw is uh, Orbicella fabulata or mountainous star coral. So it's almost like a paint conversation that you guys are having back and forth as you go through each of the steps. Definitely. Absolutely. It's hard mm -hmm. to collaborate in isolation, but uh, yes. we've determined to find a way. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of inspiration, can, can we hear a little bit about the coral that influences these paintings? Mm. Yeah, so um, like for me personally, a lot of the inspiration came from like scuba diving. I'm an avid scuba diver um, and um, a lot of the nurseries, sorry, a lot of the diving schools now are starting to develop their own nurseries um, just because of like the nature of the coral being so endangered, like putting some money into diving schools are trying to put it back into helping um, more coral grow and, and regenerate more coral. Um, so it's like the coral is like thousands of years old, 5,000 I think is a typical number for like black coral um, and in the, in the space of a hundred years I think we're gonna like lose almost half of it. So uh, what are the goals of the project uh, would you say? Well, we, we really wanted to to raise awareness about this issue um, that's that's really close to both of our hearts. We both have a, a deep uh, affection for the ocean and the uh, so it's like 70 percent of the earth's oxygen is created by marine plants and these marine plants live in coral reefs, um, which are like really susceptible to, you know, the global warming process, but, um, but also like Claire said, like uh, poaching and hab habitat degradation by, um, by humans. There's this uh, black market for black coral, mm -hmm. um, which, black uh, yeah, black, black coral market. Um, which is kind of wild because it's an endangered species and it doesn't make particularly strong jewelry. It's actually really brittle. Um, and so the black coral was actually the inspiration for one of my favorite paintings, uh, Parenthipothes. Oh, yeah. Um, and I feel like it really, you know, shows the, the color palette that we used a lot, the teals and the um, sort of mauve, which doesn't show up great in my apartment because it's a little yellow in here, but I do have some, some detail shots of that one. Um, great. Let's see them. Yeah. I love the detail of, um, there's kind of like a spidery detail on there that looks like it actually is a piece of coral. 
that were literal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This one came out like a little bit more literal, I feel, um, than, than some of the others that tend to be like really, really abstract. Mm -hmm. um, this one to me is, is one of the more literal choral pieces. So all of these paintings that we just saw, they are in your shop right now, mm -hmm. but having like some like an adorable little piece of color that just gives a little splash to your wall. I mean, they're just perfect for that. Um, yeah, apartment sized art. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you both for joining us. This was a beautiful uh, little presentation. I loved seeing the inspiration and going into more detail with these pieces. So we did another- well, Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>